God, I think, is an atmosphere. It's an atmosphere that's created. You want it. You ask for it. You talk about it. Whatever you talk about will come. You talk fear, fear will come. You talk lack, lack will come. You talk the anointing, the anointing will come. You talk healing, healing will come. You talk the presence and the glory, the glory will come. But I remember um, one of the shocks that I went through is, you know, I was a typical Pentecostal pastor all those many years, and then when revival broke out, I mean, it just so turned my world upside down. I began to see everything from a different perspective. But one of the things that really shocked me was um, when, when we'd be in worship, Steve and I would never say anything about this during the Browns Revival, but when we'd be in worship, when God would move in to heal, you could feel heat come in the building. Mm. You could feel like, the, you ever been outside on a cloudy day and the sun breaks through and you can feel the sun on your exposed skin, you know, yes. like your neck and your ears and all? Well, we'd be in there worshiping and it would feel like the sun would come out and you could feel heat. Well, I remember one night, and this would happen a lot. We never would say anything about it because we don't want people to get their mind more on the heat than the healer. <laughs> but God would show up and start healing and people would just start screaming out, you know, unrehearsed whatsoever. It was just spontaneous. But anyway, I was up on the platform one night with Steve and the place was jam packed with people. There was people outside in the grass. They were in the overflow rooms. They were there by the thousands. And we hadn't been in revival very long, maybe a year, something like that. And as we were worshiping, this woman just started screaming. She just started, you know, jumping up and down like this and just shaking her hands. And she was just jumping up and down in place and staring at her husband. And so, you know, the way I am is if you don't scream in church, you need a pretty good reason. You know, don't just scream. You know, so <laughs> I grabbed the handheld microphone and I went down off the platform and I, and, I, and I walked right up to her. She never even looked at me. She didn't care I was coming. She just kept staring at her husband. And her husband was a Vietnam vet in Vietnam and one day he picked up a grenade and threw it and when he did it blew half his hand off before it went off he took and tossed it and it blew half his hand off in here like a big moon while we were worshiping it felt like the sun came out and his hand started like whip stitching it was like an Shoot. invisible whip wow. stitch in there and the hand just started filling in I saw it when I got there and I was looking at what she was screaming at you know I saw what she was screaming at, and I, I started screaming myself. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> so the, the meat was just whip stitching on like that, and it was the most natural thing I have ever seen. Come on. But at the same time, it was the most supernatural thing I've ever seen. But what happens is when the glory is in a place, it's an atmosphere, those kinds of things are normal. But where the presence of God is not welcome, those things are very abnormal. Now, there's, you know, everybody understands the blood. The blood is God's detergent for sin. The anointing is God's authorization to do the works of the ministry in the earth. But the presence of God is, is the weighty, manifest, weighty kabod of God. It's a manifest presence. One of the things that I could say about the presence of God for me personally, yes, it's powerful. Yes, it's awesome. Yes, there's healings. Yes, there's all kinds of things but it's therapeutic. It's the most therapeutic atmosphere you can be in. Rest, like I can't begin to describe. Rest for the soul. Rest in your body. And you just don't want to leave. Listen, you'd look up at four o'clock in the morning, Apostle, and there would be as many people or more there than when we started at seven o'clock. The glory of God would be so strong and that atmosphere would be so saturated with the glory of God that people just didn't want to leave. And, you, and, and I don't know why, but it seemed like God would never really move in full power till after midnight. It's something about that midnight hour. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and the house was shaken. After midnight, there would come such a presence in that place. I think it so thrilled the Holy Spirit to see people that was willing to stay there yes. from one day into another day and be seeking him with all their heart, that the glory of God would come into that place. And, and I just don't have time to tell you the things that he would do. Awesome. Apostle, I hear so many preachers saying, God, God will curse America, America, 
God is not moving in America. I have seen the most incredible move of God in places in America in my own church.